For those of you who don't know me, my name's Angela, and I'm one of the staff here. I'm called the Support Services Coordinator. Uh, my role is an admin one. It's all behind the scenes. It has never been here, behind this thing, up here in front of you. So it's a first for all of us. So are you brave? <laughs> I'll be brave. Um, the amazing series that we're looking at is called This Must Be Stronger Than That. And we've already had a couple of really great messages about that. But today, my, my message is faith must be stronger than doubt. We're going to look at the wrestle between faith and doubt and weigh up our future responses. Um, I just um, want to play a, a little intro clip. Willow Creek has gone to the trouble of making it just for us for today. Fit my message perfectly. Um, so we're just going to let them start it off. Has your heart ever beat fast, wrestling with faith and doubt? Have you ever had questions, prayers that went unanswered? When it comes to the supernatural, it seems there are only two ways to approach it. With faith or with doubt. Mostly, we think the two are in opposition, that they don't play nicely together. And in the face of faith or doubt, our hearts must choose belief or unbelief, one or the other. And yet, is it possible we're wrong? Could there be room for both? A deeper look into scripture reveals this very thing. Peter nearly drowned in a sea of doubt that just moments before he'd been walking on. Thomas doubts the risen Christ even as his hands touch Jesus' wounds. Upon hearing the supernatural things Jesus was doing, even John the Baptist had reservations about this miracle man. Even Jesus himself held faith and doubt in tension. On the cross, he cried out, My God, why have you forsaken me? And so, let us steady our beating hearts, seeking to reconcile our questions. Today, whether you have faith or whether you have doubt, God leaves room for both. Like the man who cried out to Jesus to heal his son, may we echo the phrase, Lord, I believe. Help me in my unbelief. So how good's that? This is um, not a message that if we have faith, everything's going to be peachy and rosy. I just want to say that up front because I've heard in the past, you know, this sort of thing and I definitely don't want you to get the wrong impression. Um, or that if we have faith, bad stuff won't happen. Jesus clearly told us in this world we will have trouble. Um, this message is also not saying that if we experience doubt, then our faith is weak. As the clip has just said, God leaves room for both faith and doubt. We can't rid ourselves of all doubt because that didn't happen to the best of them. But we can move forward in faith despite doubt. And when we do that, we leave room for amazing things to happen. For the amazing things, though, to even have the possibility of happening, faith must be stronger than doubt. Now, I told you before that my role is not up here. So why am I up here? A couple of months ago, I was just driving in the car all by myself and I was just minding my business, trying to pay attention to driving. And um, God just put this thought into my head and said, um, you know, what's your favourite Bible story? I was like, oh, I'm not really sure. Um, but instantly, Ezekiel 37 came into my head. And I was like, yeah, the dry bones, that's, that's pretty cool. I, I love that one. I absolutely love it. And I was sort of just thinking on that for a bit. And God put on my heart, he said, I want you to speak on it. Like, speak on it? I don't know about that, God. What do you mean, speak on it? Um, well, firstly, I don't, have, I don't have the desire to be up here. I don't desire to publicly speak. 
And also, I doubted that I would be brave enough. So I just said to God, well, if you want me to speak on it, you make it happen. So I was kind of like putting the ball in his court. That was that. I just thought, <laughs> it's probably my, my mind, so it's okay, I'll be safe. <laughs> um, but about a week later, Matt calls me into his office and he says, oh, in the new year, I've got this amazing new series called This Must Be Stronger Than That, and, and I'd really like you to be one of the speakers. I'm like, what? <laughs> um, I totally freaked out, and doubt and fear were instantly beside me. I was literally shaking in my boots because I remembered the conversation with God, and although I wanted to say, heck no, I am not doing that, um, what other choice did I have but to say yes? Okay, God, you've made this happen. So, I said yes, not no way. But if you ask Neil, who was in the office at the time, she will confirm that I was um, shaking in my boots. But she met me with encouragement and so had Matt, of course. So, am I up here because I think I'm a mega awesome speaker and when Matt asked me that, I was like, yes, finally, I get to be on the stage. <laughs> no, of course I didn't. But... I'm, and is it because I am full of faith all the time and doubt's kind of in the background for me and it really doesn't impact me much at all? No, quite the opposite. But I'm here because I know the God who placed the stars in the sky. I know the one who created the earth to team with life and I know the one who imprints our lives with his fingerprint. I heard his voice and I believe he has a message for us all. So hopefully you can hear it in spite of me being here. Trust me, since I said this, this, this particular message has been road tested on me last week and the weeks prior, not just about standing up here, but other personal issues in my life. So um, this is very clearly a message to myself too. So let's submit this time to God in prayer because we want him to move. We want him to speak. So Lord Jesus, have your way in our hearts and minds this day. Lord, may you speak into the depths of our beings as we look today at the struggle between doubt and faith. What would you say to each of us individually? May our ears be open to hear you. And what will you say to us as a church, as real life? May we hear your voice and may your spirit bring a fresh bubbling up of faith in this room that will outlive all of us. We submit this message that faith must be stronger than doubt and ask that you would speak to us in Jesus' name. So let's jump in and discover this favourite story of mine. It's the incredible vision Ezekiel has in chapter 37. We're just going to read it. The hand of the Lord was on me, and he brought me out, of, out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. Now, the fact that it's noted that they're very dry is pretty important because, you know, it shows to us that those bones have been dead a really long time. They haven't been buried, they've been baked in the sun, they've been feasted on by the animals. Nobody's come back, the loved ones have not come back to find their missing one and bury them. So for every era, in every cultural context, this is probably considered cursed. You know, these bones are cursed because they're certainly not loved on, are they? So, Ezekiel's listening to God and God asks him, Son of man, can these bones live? How would you answer? How would you have answered God with that question? And you've seen this big valley of bones. Um, I hope it wouldn't have been my response to say, heck no. <laughs> but God knew the answer, of course. His faith question was for Ezekiel's benefit. And he often asked us those sorts of things for our own benefit too. Will Ezekiel answer with doubt or faith? He says, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. This is a great answer from Ezekiel because it actually doesn't allow human doubt to rob what comes next. So I have an imagination that if I'm reading something, I see it in full colour like a movie and um, I'd, I would love to see this in full colour. But you're going to have to put on your imagination, turn it on, sit, sit in your seat, position yourself to really try and picture this happening. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you and you will come to life. 
I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked, and tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says, come breath from the four winds and breathe into these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded, and breath entered them. They came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. How incredible would that have been to see that vision? These people that were once bones scattered in a valley, a vast army living and breathing. It's such a great scene. I really hope that Hollywood takes this on one day, because I think you know the people that made Lord of the Rings and other kind of epic films, oh, this would be awesome. God continues, Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the people of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. We are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, This is what the Sovereign Lord says, My people, I'm going to open up your graves and bring you up from them. I will put my spirit in you and you will live. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken and I have done it, declares the Lord. So this leads me to introduce you to my friend over here behind the the black curtain. (laughs) This is Captain Bones. He's from this college science department. He's kindly on loan. Thank you, James Colfax, for organising that for me. (laughs) We have to be very delicate. As you can see, this poor fella is most certainly not alive. He, um, he definitely needs to be prophesied over, but you're not going to do that because this definitely has to go back to the college. <laughs> and plus, I'm sure half of you will be freaked out of your brain. <laughs> so we've just imagined this, this section of Ezekiel, imagining the bones coming to life. But I just want you to swap your imagination to another scene. Just say you've just completed your CPR training and shortly after you find yourself at the scene of an accident. Somebody is lying motionless and they're not breathing. So what are you going to do? You might be a bit scared. You might be worried that you're not going to remember all the training and maybe you're not going to make the right pressure of breathing and all of that. But you're going to give it a go, aren't you? You're going to put that, um, that learning to the test with the hope that it revives the person. You have the hope because it, is, it was living just a minute ago, it was breathing, but you're going to try and get that happening again. But if you came across a skeleton, would you test out your CPR? I've never heard of that happening. Would you have hope that it would live again if you did that? You absolutely wouldn't. You wouldn't call the ambulance, you'd call the police or maybe Ghostbusters. But hang on a minute, this is not our perspective. Sorry, it's God's perspective. We look at those bones and we think, no, not not possible. Science of today would not be able to do that. Science of the future will never be able to breathe into a skeleton and make it come to life. So there's no possibility of life from bones, but to God... Having bones to bring to life is actually a lot of material. If you think about it, when he created the earth and the stars, he spoke them out, he breathed them out. When he created Adam, he just got a bit of dust. When he created Eve, he had a rib. So a whole skeleton and a whole valley of bones is amazingly a lot for him to work with. So God was planning to take Israel from a place of spiritual death and disgrace to a place of being filled with his life and spirit. That's what the vision was all about. And that's what he wants to do today to each of us and to those who aren't sitting in the room. What or who in your life has been dry for a long time and looks like Captain Bones? Are you in a valley 
or see that someone else is in one. It doesn't matter if you think things are too far gone. This is not too far gone for our God. Who does God want to fill with his life and spirit in your area of influence? It could be a work friend. It could be somebody in your family. It could be somebody you know here. This is, this is a really important bit. If you're like me and you take photos of the screen from time to time or you write notes, really, this is, this is one I really want you to take note of. Sometimes we wait for God to move, but maybe God is waiting for us to speak, to speak the words he gives us and to prophesy over those dry bones that we see. In John 5, Jesus said that he couldn't do anything by himself, that he only did what he saw the Father doing. Verse, in verse 21, he says, For just as the Father raises the dead and gives them life, even so the Son gives life to whom he is pleased to give it. The same is true for us in our relationship with Jesus. We need to listen for the voice of Jesus, to look out for what we see him doing, and then prophesy the things he wants us to prophesy. Our job is to speak life. If we are made in God's image, as the first chapter of Genesis tells us, and if we're filled by his spirit, then his words in our mouths will transform lives. Loving to transform lives, transform lives is God's signature move. Absolutely loves it. So please invite the spirit of God into the impossible scenarios you might be thinking right now about in your head. The saying, iron sharpens iron, is true and very challenging, particularly in relationships. Who's got those relationships, you know, the ones that really grind you up? Uh, you just, oh, you just, you get irked a bit. But you know that deep down those relationships can really help you. So in all kinds of ways, you know, you might have low patience and that person's just helped you to grow a little in that area. You know, there's all kinds of ways relationships can help us to be sharpened. In the same way, I think doubt can sharpen faith. Even if it is awkward at times and downright annoying because, you know, you're just trying to do your faith thing and then in comes doubt trying to rob you and pull you down and make you sit down and, and shut up, basically. Doubt is a human condition and it tends to be fueled when bad things happen. So separate to our beliefs, separate to spirituality and our relationship with God... Doubt is something that plagues all humanity. Do you agree? It can be negative words spoken over our lives by others or ourselves. It can be failures. It can be mistakes, disappointments, all kinds of traumatic events that can happen to us. So if we have failure, we will doubt that we can next succeed. If we lose a job, we might think, oh, we're never going to get another one. If we have trust broken in a relationship, we doubt others can be trustworthy in the future. So we protect ourselves and we... Um, try to stop that from happening. So doubt is a human condition, but it is also a spiritual one. We doubt God can use us. We doubt our relationship could be healed or restored. We doubt God is with us or has heard us, or we doubt the abilities or gifts that God's given us. Doubt will ask us tough questions and will attempt to set itself up against our faith to erode it by any means possible. Our enemy knows that if he can erode faith, until doubt is the stronger partner, then he's won the battle. On the other hand, if faith is purposely exercised, consistently pushing back against doubt with God's word and his spirit, it is strengthened and sharpened like muscles instead. The doubting characters we see in the Bible and also mentioned on the clip, in spite of their failings and mistakes, they continue to move forward in faith achieving exceptional things for the kingdom of God. Because as Zechariah tells us in chapter 4, 6, God says, it's not by might nor by power, but it's by my spirit. To operate in the spirit of God, faith must be stronger than doubt. Doubt can ask questions, as we've said, that fuel or sharpen our faith. But when doubt rules faith, stuff has no choice but to stay dead like Captain Bones. If Ezekiel had answered God with, no way, those bones can't live, there's no saving those, nothing further would have happened because it was Ezekiel's job to speak the words of prophecy, releasing God's spirit to do what was impossible for Ezekiel and impossible for the people of Israel. 
Doubt can wreak havoc when we allow it to bounce around our heads. The best thing to do when you doubt is to be honest. You can be honest to somebody you know, like you know somebody who's with the faith journey, in the faith journey with you, but more importantly, to lay out our thoughts before Jesus. Ask for his help. We see great examples by David in Psalms, but in particular, Psalms 42 and 43. David said all sorts of things in those two chapters. Stuff like tears had been his food day and night. I'm sure you've had times where you have cried all day and night. People were saying to him all day, where is your God? He said he was mourning. He thought he was forgotten by God, but not just forgotten. He felt he was rejected. I'm sure we've all had moments of this. He even said that his bones were suffering mortal agony. I love that statement, mortal agony. Have you ever used that? We don't in our modern day, but he was trying to say he was in a bad place. Like he was in agony. He was in a hole. It was just a place of darkness, no doubt. But amongst all that doubt, he says three times, Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my saviour and my God. He knew that if he put his hope in God, even though he was right in the midst of mortal agony, that at a later date he would be praising God again. David regularly reminded himself of what God had done in the past and he knew he could do it again. In Matthew 17 and Luke 17, Jesus says that if we have faith as small as a mustard seed, you've all seen mustard seeds, haven't you? Teeny little tiny things. If I held it up, you wouldn't be able to see it between my fingers. Jesus said that if we had faith that small, that we could move mountains or even uproot a tree. Why does faith only need to be small like a mustard seed? Because that small seed grows the biggest of trees. Faith is like a capsule, like that seed, that is packed with lots of growth DNA. When it's planted, God does the rest. Now, When I was writing this sermon, I thought, growth DNA, that is cool. It's like it's packed in there. And yesterday, I wondered if that's a thing, so I Googled it, and it really is. There's actually companies named growth DNA. So there you go. It's a real thing. (laughs) But in Hebrews 11.6, it tells us, without faith, without that tiny little seed, it is impossible to please God. We need the starting place. We need the seed with the faith packed into it. If doubt has come along and stolen that seed, we are not even at the starting line. But if doubt has come along and challenged faith, oftentimes we have a wrestle with it. We wrestle with that doubt. We wrestle with the questions doubt brings up. Um, But if we have that wrestle and discover strength along the way, then doubt has served to sharpen our faith instead. Faith is not only like that DNA-packed growth pill, It is also like a magnet that draws out the power of God. I don't know if you've heard that referred to, that the power of God is like a magnet. That's also mine. (laughs) If we look at Mark 5, the woman with the constant blood loss who was desperate to be healed, we know that story, it's famous. She was... She was, you know, in agony for 14 years with this constant blood loss and she would have undergone so much with the medicine of the day. We're so blessed to be born in this modern day. But here she is. She hasn't given up. She hasn't sat down and thought, that's it, that's my lot. I might as well just lay down and die. She hears about Jesus. The Bible tells us that her faith-filled touch of Jesus' coat, not even his skin, not even that his face looked at her, but just his coat, it attracted the power of God like a magnet. Because Jesus said he felt power leave his body through his clothes because of her faith. In the instance of this dear lady, her faith was stronger than doubt, even though she'd been in that dark place for such a long time. And she received what she hoped for. We can all have that hope. When you hold faith, regardless of the whisperings of doubt, stuff is then in God's hands. That's the best place. Our hands mess stuff up. But his hands, his voice, create. Things may not pan out as we think they might, but putting doubt to the side and picking faith up instead is where the possibilities live. 
But putting faith to the side and letting doubt do the driving, that's where possibilities die. I want to give you an example of my own family. I was born into a family that went to church. It was normal practice from day dot when I was a baby. Um, but, the, but, but some horrible things happened for my parents. And my dad stopped coming along to church with us when I was about nine. By the time I was an older teenager, my brother and my two sisters and even my mum were not coming along anymore. It was just me. And I didn't have a car at that time. And I was saddened by it, but I still wanted to go. And amazingly, God had this family that was in my same suburb that went to my church. And there was nobody else in my direct area that was anywhere close. And so they willingly and lovingly picked me up every week. I was always small. I'm glad you can see me behind this thing. Um, so every time I would get you know, ready to hop in the car, the dad would say, Righto, Angela, jump into the glove box. <laughs> I, I didn't know how to, what to say about that, so I was just like, jumped on the seat instead. I'll just get in then. But that was, so, that was so lovely to do that for me until I bought my own car and I could get myself to church. But one week I was at church and I was in the worship time. And I, honestly, I was not thinking of my family. I, I don't remember thinking of my family. I was just worshipping God. But in the moment, God clearly said to me, one day you will see all your family members, sorry, one day you will see all your family members once again praising my name. I was excited by this, but by no means was it instant. And many times it seemed like a pipe dream. I had to consistently pray over each one, reminding God of his promise and asking him to release the power of his spirit in their hearts and minds. And I did stuff too, like I told my brother, hey, there's this really cute girl, you should come along. <laughs> Honestly, the rest is history <laughs> for him. <laughs> the seed of faith God gave me was under fire by doubt many times. But faith encouraged me because God had spoken. There were ups and downs and the timing was different for each person, but there came a time when they were each professing God's goodness once again, except for my dad. When I was 28, I moved to Darwin with Nathan, my husband, and three-month-old Caleb, and I moved back to Queensland eight years later. We happened to arrive on Christmas Day, just in time for Christmas dinner. It was a real joy. That night, you can imagine the joy that I had when my dad declares he would be the one to give thanks to God for the food and for his family. I hadn't heard dad pray or say grace probably since I was a really young child. I couldn't remember. And my dad has done it many times since and he's talked of how God has blessed him at various times. So approximately 18 years after God gave me that word, it was finally fulfilled. I want you to have that hope too. If you've heard from God, don't give up. Another great outcome of faith when we hang in there is that at any point in time, we can be drawn into God's grand marketing plan. I love what happens when Daniel survives the lions, don't you? Do you remember? He survives the lions. He spends the night there. They're obviously very hungry, but we know he survives. God shuts their mouths. So the king runs down in the morning because he didn't want Daniel to be eaten and he was just like, Daniel, are you alive? Well, he was pretty happy to hear Daniel call back, yes, I'm alive, I haven't been eaten. God has rescued me and I have not done wrong before you. And this is the grand marketing plan. King Darius was so happy that he wrote to all the nations and peoples of every language in all the earth. May you prosper greatly. I issue a decree that in every part of my kingdom, people must fear and reverence the God of Daniel, for he is the living God and he endures forever. His kingdom will not be destroyed and his dominion will never end. He rescues and he saves. He performs signs and wonders in the heavens and on the earth. He has rescued Daniel from the power of the lions. How cool is that? That's a pretty good marketing plan on God's behalf. I don't know that Daniel would have been like, yeah, pick me. I don't know that I would have been pretty happy to be chucked in the lion's den. I would have for sure looked like this dude and pretty, pretty quickly. But guess what? That marketing plan certainly would have not, not have been possible if Daniel had not been consistently living out his faith. 
trusting God regardless of the rules of the land of the time and the punishment that it would give out. You never know when your faith will be rewarded or or God's name praised like this, so please don't give up. Let your faith be stronger than your doubt. Let's take a minute, and maybe you've already been doing this in your head, to consider your current faith-doubt landscape. At any point in time, have you stopped planting the power pack seeds? Do you look at your own physical, with your own physical eyes at a dead or dry situation like this Captain Bones and see it as hopeless instead of seeing through God's eyes a possibility? Has God, has, sorry, has doubt snuffed the power of God at work in your life and the lives of those around you because your mouth was silent? Has God's power been repressed in your choices rather than attracted like a magnet? I know this has happened to me. Honesty is the best policy. If you think this has happened for you in the past, God has this covered. Jude one twenty two tells us to be merciful to those who doubt. Now, if God's telling us to be merciful to those who doubt, guess what? He's expecting to be merciful to us first because he doesn't tell us something and do, does another thing. When Peter stepped out towards Jesus to walk on the water in the middle of a storm... We know he became afraid, he looked at the waves, he doubted and he started sinking. Jesus didn't say to him, well, you've got no faith, so get yourself back in the boat. The Bible instead tells us that immediately Jesus reaches out his hand and he catches him. The the image on the screen here is my absolute most favourite painting of Jesus. It's available online and one day I'm going to buy it. I would absolutely love to order a large copy of it and have it on a wall that I look at regularly because it reminds me of Jesus' mercy. He knows we live with the tension of doubt and faith and he is with us, always, ready to grab us should we have that wrestle. Jesus knows that wrestle himself. God knew this faith-doubt wrestle would exist for humanity or he wouldn't have put all the examples in the Bible. Faith must be stronger than doubt But remember, doubt can serve to sharpen it. You can't change the times when doubt has overruled faith, but you can ask him to help faith stay alive alongside doubt in the present. Not just stay alive, but be strengthened. Today, it is my hope that you'll be reminded of who we serve and how powerful his words are when spoken with our obedient lips. What dry area does God want you to speak over? Let's listen for the answer and trust God for the, for the transformation. I want to play you a song now. Um, it's by Hillsong. It's called Come Alive, and it's around the theme of today. And if you can just sit in that, the words will be on the screen. Just let it speak to your spirit and, and ponder the things that are already in your heart and mind that God's placed there as I've been speaking. Is a 
So leave those shackles in the grave now And dance like you were young You do not have to live in chains now There's a key within your song So leave the past where it belongs, child And take a leap into the light Come find the freedom you were born for And tell that soul to rise Arise, arise, arise Get up and rise, rise And I'll sing it again Come alive, come alive, come alive, dry bones Come alive, come alive, come alive, dry bones Wake, arise, inhale the life Come alive, come alive Come alive, come alive Come alive, come alive Oh, come alive Walk from the eye invite you to visualize those dry places and those dry, and those dry bones that you might see in your life and in the lives of others declare the goodness of god in this song tell your soul like david i will praise the lord he's got this he is the way maker after the song if you want to come to the front and have somebody stand with you in prayer please do the prayer team are ready They've been poised for a week to pray for you if you want that prayer. You might like prayer because you're struggling with the difficulty of doubt right now. You might find yourself in that dark place like David expresses. Or maybe you just really love the faith encouragement of someone standing with you. I really particularly want to pray for people who have never heard the voice of God speak to them. Like I expressed how God said, you know, one day you're going to see your family praising my name again. If you haven't heard him speak into your mind or your heart ever before, I'd love to pray with you guys too. Anything to do with what we've been talking about, the prayer team are ready to come and pray. The pastoral team will pray for you. So let's sing this song. And if you'd like prayer, just come up afterwards. That'd be great. <laughs>